morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, and welcome back to adobelife.com. We are live from New York City at the 99U conference. It's actually the ninth 99U conference. Is it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. And for the next hour, I'm joined by Nicholas Mizani. Hi. Hi, Nicholas. How are hey. you today? Great, great. Yeah? Nice to see you. Uh, we're going to be uh, talking about Nicholas's work uh, just, in, just in a second. But I just wanted to go over uh, where we're streaming from. We're uh, at, the 90, at the 99U conference. It's a uh, conference all about creativity and how, how about to get your um, uh, creative career started and jump started and how to continue uh, a, a full creative life. So this is a ninth year that uh, there is this conference. It used to be a Behance conference. Oh, got it. Okay. But then when we acquired Behance, we, meaning Adobe, um, it also became an Adobe conference. And, um, and yes, and we are streaming here. We've been streaming here yesterday. And this is day two of our live stream here on adobelive.com. And for those of you in the chat, hi there. Good morning. Hi. Yes, Judith, Siregu. Uh, tell us a little bit where you guys are uh, watching from so we get a little around the world yeah. uh, in the chat. And just to make something clear, I know that many of you are submitting their portfolios using the Submit Portfolio button at the, at the lower end of the interface on adobelive.com. The portfolios we'll be looking at today are, have actually already been selected. We've selected those uh, from submissions uh, by using that button in the past uh, few weeks. So these are pretty much blocked. So if you want to be selected for future um, uh, portfolio reviews, Please use that button, but don't get all angry on me when I don't select your portfolio today. All right, okay. that's kind of important. All right, all right, Nicholas, welcome. I'm opening you. your your website here, Great. and uh, let's talk a little bit about you. Who, sure. Who is Nicholas okay. Mizani? <laughs> well, uh, right now Nicholas is a little bit nervous, but okay. yeah, <laughs> don't be. Otherwise, um, I was uh, I was born in Milan, in mm -hmm. Italy, and I moved uh, to the States um, in 2005 to go to college in upstate New York mm -hmm. at a small liberal arts school called Skidmore College. Okay. I studied uh, music, classical music there, mm -hmm. so I was a, a harp performance major. And uh, once I graduated, I sort of um, realized that I wasn't really good enough to join an orchestra. and. Okay. I could either like play weddings and funerals for the rest of my career, or, or I could do something else, right? Like playing at malls. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> what was your instrument? It was the harp. The harp. Yeah. Oh, that's so awesome. particularly suited for like weddings and funerals, okay. especially. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want to do weddings so, and funerals. So yeah. So I took a graphic design class over the summer, okay. and uh, I really, really loved it. And I had sort of been doing it on the side as a hobby, mm -hmm. and. Um, I, I decided to move to New York. I went to Pratt to do mm -hmm. an MFA in uh, communications design. Okay. And uh, and that's been it. After that, I started working at Penguin, uh, yeah. doing book covers. And now I am at uh, Louis Feely LTD. Mm -hmm. It's a small um, studio here in the city. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we do a lot of uh, restaurant branding and typography and. Luis, I don't know if uh, if any if any of you are familiar with Luis's work, but you should look her up. She's really amazing designer. Luis, Luis Feely. Luis Feely. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we can have a look at. Uh, yeah. At yeah, yeah. We should. Yeah. And uh, do you remember the time when it just clicked in your mind that this is what you wanted to do? Hmm. Um, I don't know or if was there was like, like it was a it was a very gradual sort of realization. Mm -hmm. um, my. Um, my, my mom is a um, studied jewelry design mm -hmm. in, in college, and my dad was also a jewelry designer. So okay. design was sort of always part of my right. life. Mm -hmm. uh, when I went to college, I decided to pursue music because I sort of was maybe in a way rebelling. You to be the rebel. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to do something different. <laughs> the the so, family's <laughs> black sheep. Right. No, I'm going to do music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then I was like, OK, no, I'm doing design. <laughs> But so, graphic design, so a little bit different. But so um, do you work with your parents as well? No, no, no. Yeah, it's never really idea. happened. Because <laughs> um, working for family is always. But difficult. I'm always like been interested in in sort of decorative arts in general. Mm -hmm. So I don't exclude the possibility of doing jewelry mm -hmm. in the future. Yeah, yeah. But for now, I'm really enjoying typography and lettering. All right. So here's your website, uh, Mizani.com. Uh, Evil Cerise is our, uh, our super mod here, and he. 
cheese pastes and all the links and stuff. So okay. Hi, awesome. Evil Series. Yeah. Thank you for your help. And I see that Julia is here. Julia was a guest uh, a few weeks ago, uh, live from Paris. Oh, excellent. We also stream from Paris, yeah. uh, Poland, South Africa. Um, wow, all over yeah, the place. Yeah, people are tuning in from everywhere. It's great. <laughs> Ah, the, the adjustment layers for Rufus's beards, yes. Yeah, 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 I know. Like, some some black, white stuff happening here, and on the sides, I, re I just realized now, yeah. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. But like my doctor says, this is a disease that you can't cure. Aging? <laughs> All right, Nicholas, let's have a, let's have a look. Okay. Um, uh, maybe do you, you want to navigate your website? Yeah, and, sure, uh, I'd show love us to. some of the work? So, um, the, the project I've been working on lately that, um, that uh, has been really fun is a series of uh, typographic mosaics I've been mm -hmm. doing. So um, I've, I've done about 10 of them now and uh, they, they, I do one every time I go somewhere or every time I sort of am remembering of the trip I took. Mm -hmm. And they're totally, um, I mean, they're not real. They're called Fosaics. They're um, illustrated. So we can click on really any one of them. Um, and I love that. Thank they're you. Fosaics. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everybody loves a good pun. So um, yeah, so I've, I've been doing this series for a couple months now. And uh, it's been really fun. Uh, like I mentioned a second ago, I've always really loved uh, decorative art, mm -hmm. so and interior design has always been like a big passion of mine. So uh, merging the two or the three, if you include lettering, mm -hmm. has really made this a uh, really pleasurable project for me. And uh, yeah, so there's I've done ten, and now I'm thinking about what's next for this series. Uh, for the next ten. I am uh, collaborating with a few different artists and designers and pat pattern designers and illustrators mm -hmm. uh, to sort of do mosaics of their, their hometowns as well. So um, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah, like I, when I uh, when I was I was talking with Michael the other day, and he said, "Oh yeah, these mosaics he's doing they're really cool." And uh, and yeah, it's like an illustration, really. It, it is. They don't yeah. exist. They don't so, exist. So but I they look actually so real. made a page for you guys, especially okay. um, where I sort of show a little bit of the process. So. Um, yeah, they're totally, so they start with just like a basic sketch and then I, I use Illustrator to kind of like clean it up. And uh, and then I, this part is all um, hand drawn. So mm -hmm. this is where sort of the illustration aspect comes in. Each tile is drawn individually and uh, sort of uh, imperfections are mm -hmm. added to every tile yeah, yeah, yeah. on its own to sort of give, that, give it that realistic look. And then they're all um, individually colored in in Photoshop and uh, and then I Photoshop the shoes in there at the very end. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so that's it's it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun doing mm -hmm. doing this project for sure. So I look forward to seeing where where it's gonna go. Um, I would love to do um, sort of larger scale like environmental stuff with mm -hmm. this. Maybe I mean I realize mosaics are very permanent and very like labor intensive, mm -hmm. but. Maybe there's a way, maybe printing them on vinyl or something yeah. to do sort of temporary mm -hmm. kind of floor installations. Yeah, I think yeah, would yeah. be a lot of fun. Uh, but or have an artisan right actually make, make them. Yeah. I'm actually working with a client right now um, where I'm collaborating with a local mosaic artist mm -hmm. to actually make a real mosaic. Mm -hmm. So that's that's, awesome. that's going to be a lot of fun, I think. Um, but aside from this project, um, oh, and also this this uh, Fosaic series has also led to a cover for last week's Village Voice, which uh, for their travel issue. Mm -hmm. So that was awesome to work on, and I only had a day to do this. Wow. And this is a pretty like time intensive process. They usually take right. about twenty four hours uh -huh, to make. Uh -huh. So a day. I didn't sleep that night. That's a day. Yeah. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. I know it takes 24 hours because yeah. of this project. Uh, okay. Um, but um, I wonder if there's like, is one realized? Is one realized as a real floor? Mm. Uh, currently, none of them are real floors yet. But um, I do have one in the works that's going to be a real floor um, for sure. So. 
so a lot of the work I do at uh, Luis's studio is uh, branding for a lot of times for the for restaurants or high-end restaurants or food packaging um, this logo you see right here is a uh, uh, a logo uh, Luis and I designed uh, for a French restaurant here in the city, and we use an Art Deco uh, back, backhanded script. So uh, a lot of my influence, and this is largely thanks to Luis, but a lot of my influence comes from design history, and especially uh, early 20th century design. Mm -hmm. So Art Deco and Art Nouveau are really big um, influences for me, uh, largely thanks to, to Luis, Luis's mentorship. Um, if there's anything in particular I could show you, um, I really love working with, I really love thinking about typography and lettering as kind of like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. So this is a poster that I am just finished, so, sort of not 100% finished, but it's getting there. And um, it will be uh, for sale soon and the, the proceeds will go to Planned Parenthood. But um, I love thinking of really sort of like obscure ligatures between mm -hmm. letters and um, kind of thinking of novel ways uh, in which letters can kind of combine and uh, form like a d design or a shape or lock up in a way that's like perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. Like I really like things that are square and align in every direction. So um, I'm hoping to get this letterpress printed. And I do, uh, I do a lot of book covers still. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I was at uh, Penguin before, before starting at Luis's, and mm -hmm. I still routinely do freelance work for them and for a lot of the other publishers uh, here in the States, but also abroad, so. But you mentioned uh, letterpress, uh, like maybe doing that on a letterpress, like, you yeah. know, you, you mentioned Fabian before. He yeah. does this wonderful stuff. And, uh, oh yeah, I'll have you to, guys should I would love that. Yeah. I would really love that. Um, He's, he's such a nice guy. Uh, I'm sure he would be awesome to work with. Like even these, these graphics are so beautiful. Yeah, did you design thank those? Thank you. Yeah, so this was for a, a book cover that I did while I was at Penguin. It was one of the last book covers I did there. And it was uh, a new translation of the I Ching. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to find a way to uh, sort of communicate this like esoteric historical quality uh, and also make it very Chinese without going sort of over the top mm -hmm. um, with sort of the Asian influence. So the, the shape these ornaments are taking is, is uh, the traditional I Ching shape, but I incorporated these like um, traditional Chinese ornaments. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, I like things to fit in squares and rectangles. So <laughs> that's a good example of that. And uh, this wasn't printed in letterpress, but it was supposed to be foil up until the very end, but then they did not have the budget, so ah, yeah, that's always the problem. Unfortunately, <laughs> um, so um, yeah, uh, so I was yeah. Speaking of book covers, I, mm -hmm. I still do uh, quite a bit of, of book covers. Uh, this is one I just I just did for um, Grove Atlantic, uh, a book about um, sort of the the dawn of electricity. And it's a collection of short stories about light and electricity and our sort of pursuit towards light from darkness. Um, so he wanted, uh, the, the author really wanted an Edison, Edison ball. Mm -hmm. And I, at first I sort of like, wasn't so thrilled about that direction because the, they, they're- Very literal. Yeah, and also very trendy. Mm. Um, but, uh, so we, we sort of worked together to find a way to sort of convey that idea without mm. being too literal. And, and by using uh, a good deal of, of custom lettering. Um, it's actually quite unusual, and I'm really um, I'm really proud of them for going with something that's um, not immediately legible. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, book publishers, especially, want something to be very very legible yeah, right yeah. away. So this was kind of pushing it a little bit for them, and I, I appreciate the the confidence that they gave me to do this. Um, um, let's see. What else? Um, oh yeah, so this was this was a fun project. This was also um, with uh, with uh, Luis. She mm -hmm. she art directed and designed this with me. Um, and we we did this uh, campaign pin for for Hillary Clinton, 
uh, which was awesome. I don't sh I don't share this one as much because it's kind of sad in general how it sort of like turned out. Played out, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> But it was still an awesome project to work on, and we also didn't have very much time. So, and sometimes when you have like almost no time, is when you don't second guess your choices, mm -hmm. which is something I, I do a lot mm -hmm. second guess. So uh, it was great to sort of do something quickly. Was there more collateral with that? Or? No, it was just, just it was pen. yeah. They asked twenty. They asked forty five artists to create a pin. Mm -hmm. Uh, because she would have been the 45th president. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. Ah, okay. um, so Luis was asked to, to do this one, um, and I, des I designed this with her. Um, and um, yeah, and also, I mean, a lot of the work I do is, um, I do a lot of work to post on Instagram. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so I've sort of put this in this tab here, because um, I find that, Sometimes it's the, the most fun things happen when you obviously don't have a client and you can just kind of do something for yourself mm -hmm. and not, not question your choices too much or not be accountable to anybody but yourself. How much time do you give to personal projects? Quite a bit, actually. Recently more so. Uh, the, the Mosaic project mm -hmm. is pretty labor intensive, so um, I usually do them in batches of two or three mm -hmm. to sort of eco economize on time a little bit. But um, I, I would say, um, I mean, when I'm actively working on one, maybe like a couple, one or two hours a day, mm -hmm. I dedicate to yeah. sort of personal work. Yeah. Um, That's a it, good tip right there. I mean, like give time uh, for personal projects in your, in yeah. your lives because that's... Sure. That's your opportunity to make things that you know that you enjoy doing, and um, that can give a new path. You know, like I'm pretty well, sure that yeah. there's going to be requests around that. Yeah, and there <laughs> have been, and it's really awesome. And also, it's it's a great way to um, to kind of take control of where your career is going because I think very often we think of um, as like our design career kind of taking us somewhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, when in fact, like you have total control of where you want it to go, because the more of one type of work you do and you put out there, the more of that type of work you'll yeah. get requests for. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, that's something Luis tells me a lot. Like she's one of one of the things she says a lot is like, don't don't just sit there and wait for the phone to ring. Yeah, just yeah, sort yeah. of like do it and um, do the work you want to do and client work will come. So just in the last, like the Mosaic project is just a couple months old, but um, just currently I have like half a dozen Mosaic themed projects from clients coming in from, oh, wow. from everywhere. So it's, it's been really That's exciting, awesome. really amazing. Is that some iron work there? Yeah, well is that, this is... Is that is, faux, faux iron work or real iron no, work? No, this is also faux. I, okay. I, like, I like faux things. Um, this is a... Um, this is a window I saw, or a gate I saw in Santo Domingo, mm -hmm. and I changed the the bottom part mm -hmm. to say "Mom" for Mother's Day. Okay. Um, so it's it's a combination. Like this is a real this is a real window, but that uh, oh. that part down there is uh, is added on. But I really I, I as you can probably tell, I love the challenge of making things look realistic. Mm -hmm. um, make them sort of like look like they fit in a space mm -hmm. so um, yeah that's 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 really fun for me um, I see a few friends that's awesome Friend, oh, your friends yeah yes. Ping said hi oh, Ping Ju hey um, yeah I'm wondering if anybody has any questions specifically yeah they'll, they'll, they'll put the questions in okay, there if they have awesome. any yeah yeah great so this is a chronological approach to your portfolio this is my basically this is my Instagram feed that oh, okay, I just okay. put onto my portfolio since I arrange everything by color uh -huh. uh, so every month or every two months I switch colors uh -huh. uh, which is a little bit neurotic but uh, <laughs> I'm actually terrible with colors mm -hmm. so this uh, putting myself that limitation, like saying like, <coughs> in Sorry. June you can only post pink, mm -hmm. is uh, is actually a relief to me. Mm -hmm. it's, not, yeah, yeah. it's not like a, a struggle, <laughs> for sure. And that, that's also a, a faux? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I um, love these. Thank you. So that, um, so this this is very similar to that, the style of that poster I showed earlier, mm -hmm. the, the Planned Parenthood poster. Um, I've sort of been, Back, also back when like Hillary was running, I did this series of um, of Hillary hashtags, where uh, these here, 
where um, I sort of took the most popular Hillary Clinton themed mm. hashtags and made like lettering out of them. And, and this is sort of like what's so awesome about doing personal work like this is I sort of challenged myself to do these really odd sort of unusual ligatures mm -hmm. and this became, so I explored that a little bit further with that, um, with that other piece, the Economize piece. Mm -hmm. And and then that became a poster, and then maybe that'll become a font if I ever get around to it. Did you ever design so. a font? Uh, no, I haven't. Um, the the Luis uh, just released a couple mm -hmm. fonts that I assisted with, mm -hmm. but I, I wasn't really actively designing them. But I enjoyed the process, like from afar. So Tia is asking Nick, uh, will your resistance pin be back for yeah. sale? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so, uh, actually. I'm thinking of doing it in a couple different colors mm -hmm. also. Uh, okay. It sold out Meaning pretty quickly. Meaning this one? It's that one there, yeah. yeah. So uh, that was for a really great project um, called Resistance Pins. Uh, mm -hmm. This this designer um, contacted a few other designers to ask if they would do limited edition pins. And I was really inspired by the, um, the French resistance movement, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of like, um, fought against Nazi occupation of Paris. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I wanted to do a pin sort of hearkening back to that. So I used this really like French looking script and uh, put it in a little heart. So it's actually really tiny, it's like this big. But oh, okay. <laughs> it will definitely be on sale again, yeah. For All right. Sure. Um, let you, we're talking about Louise a lot. Maybe we can just yeah. you know, like um, uh, make a new tab and... Uh, European keyboard. Yeah, it's I, Italian yeah, keyboard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I missed having the accented U every time ah. I <laughs> every time I try to push return. Yeah, so this is Luisa's site. Um, a lot of a lot of you guys might know her. Um, she uh, she does a lot of restaurant branding and um, has really been a, a really strong, inspiring influence for me. This uh, this book actually just came out. Uh, I. Luis and I designed the cover mm -hmm. for this. Also faux, it's a yeah. stained glass window. Um, and it's a collection of signs from um, Barcelona. Yeah. So, um, so this is about to come out. This is the third in the series. Luis travels all across Europe uh -huh. and, uh, and takes photographs of signs, uh, which is really wonderful because these signs are sort of slowly disappearing. Mm -hmm. So she's really doing all of us kind of a service in or slowly them. reappearing as well because really? I think through the through the work of, of uh, you know talented designers like you, oh, um, you. They, no they they can they can actually have a revival oh, this, this, yeah. this type uh, of style you yeah know, instead of having um, everything like written in Helvetica and <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah um, yeah I mean mm. the challenge for for me like has always been to the find a way to take historical reference mm. and. Reinterpreting it, reinterpreting it, and sort of putting it within a more modern context. Okay. Um, I think that's uh, that's something that I'm particularly interested in, sort of the convergence between those those forms. Um, but uh, Luis is is sort of meticulous about having having it be look very authentic, and it's been an awesome learning experience working for her. All right. And how many how many are you in, in Luis's studio? Like, um, currently, it's just me. Just you. That's yeah. awesome. Huh. Yeah. So, anyway. Yeah, my oh, Luis. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, like Luis was at uh, in in Daba in uh, the design in Daba in Cape Town. So Judia said I saw her in Cape Town during oh, design. Awesome. Yeah, design in Daba. Oh, is that? I think I know who Nina T is. <laughs> huh? I think I know who Nina T is. Okay. Do <laughs> uh, you tell all your awesome. friends? <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> it's so great to see all these like familiar names on here. I saw Rachel earlier. Mm. Hey, Rachel. Um, let's let's look at uh, at a few other projects. Uh, yeah, very yeah, quickly. for sure. Um, is there something in particular you'd like to see? I love them all. Oh, There's, thank you. Oh, I love these. Like, like this is like. 
This is like the beginning of your experimentation with, um, with type. With um, no, with mosaics. Oh, actually, it's 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 really awesome that you noticed that because mm -hmm. um, that was part of um, it was part of the influence for this project, mm -hmm. but it kind of got lost as the sort of the iterations of the mm -hmm. cover progressed. I I was in uh, in Puerto Rico a few years ago, and I saw a mosaic sign that had a similar sort of style, and I was currently reading this book that I was that I had to design mm -hmm. um, so I knew I wanted to do something that had that kind of look and I tried a few options with mosaics and then ended up sort of like reversing it mm -hmm. and I left the grout lines in there kind of as like I don't know an artifact of like a previous version mm -hmm. but um, so it's great that you noticed but yeah this was for uh, a book um, by Penelope Lively mm. um, she's a really wonderful um, British author um, who's like a mainstay on, on um, Penguin's roster mm -hmm. and she actually just came out with a new book um, and uh, the and I at this at that time I was working at Penguin but by the by the time the new book came out I was mm -hmm. no longer there but the um, the art director requested that I worked on it anyway so we worked on something that is similar but not um, sort of related but mm -hmm. not not identical. I also did the book, for, the book for the Pope, mm -hmm. um, which was terrifying, but also a lot yeah. of fun. Um, and yeah, and let's see. Um, I guess one of my like these are getting like sort of like on the older side, but mm -hmm. there's one a little bit farther yeah. up, also kind of old. This one here mm -hmm. that um, is still like one of my favorites, even though I did it back in 2015. Um, this was when I first started working for Luis, so I was really sort of inspired by all this this amazing design reference that mm -hmm, she has mm -hmm. in her studio. So she introduced me to Dart Hunter's work. Uh, he's uh, an American designer and printmaker and illustrator. You know, back then they sort of did everything. And Luis is here. Bravissimo, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, Luis. <laughs> And, uh, Who is in Rome? She's in Rome? She is in Rome, yeah. Oh. She's, uh, she teaches this master's workshop oh, in typography okay. every year. All right. So, um, she's, uh, she's... So you're holding the that. fort. I'm, I'm holding down the fort. <laughs> um, I should be at work right now, actually. Okay, all right. <laughs> but I did no, no. tell Luis. Luis, don't worry. <laughs> we'll send him back to work I'll in a second. I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I was really inspired by Dart Hunter's work. Um, Luis gave me a, a book of his for Christmas, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to find Dart Hunter, books about Dart mm -hmm. Hunter. So I did this project for New Year's, for a New Year's card, where I was sort of like went all out. And this was a uh, silk screen mm. uh, stencil, actually. So um, I, I cut out the stencil and then silk screened it that way. Mm -hmm. It's like the easiest way to do a silk screen, unless you have a million little dots. In yeah. that case, it's yeah. not, not very easy. Yeah. But, um, but it yeah, was, I was saying that the texture is so cool. So it, this is real. This is real, yeah. not mm -hmm. fake for yeah. a change. Yeah. So there's a question from Kevin Schneider. Nick, how do you brainstorm ideas in general? Are you using some creative techniques? I'm always interested in the creative process from other designers. It's not easy gen to generate ideas. Yeah, um, the idea phase is like, it's exciting and also terrifying. Mm -hmm. Like I, I generally, um, I'm not a much of a sketcher. Mm -hmm. um, I do sketch, but my sketches are like pretty utilitarian and a little bit Just for positioning. Yeah, yeah, very sort of very ugly. So I don't share my sketches very often. <laughs> but <laughs> um, generally, I, I start by um, looking at design history. Mm -hmm. So if I'm doing something that I want an Art Deco look mm -hmm. for, I'll, I'll take a look at that um, at that look at that time period specifically. Um, and, and then from there, I sort of like just iterate and keep going. I'm not a terribly like conceptual thinker. Um, that's always, that's been one of my struggles working at Penguin because book covers are all about conceptual yeah. thinking and metaphor, mm -hmm. which are, are still a challenge for me. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm much more kind of form driven than concept driven. Um, and this is actually uh, a set of note cards, speaking of Art Deco, mm -hmm. that um, also did uh, for Luis while at, while at Luis. And this was a collaboration with uh, Kelly Thorne as well, um, who worked there when I first started there mm -hmm. and now is off on, on her but own. I think the thing you said about you know the sketchbook, even if it's 
if it doesn't look good, it doesn't matter. I think it's still important to have the sketchbook. Mm -hmm. do you have, do you have a, is it a book or do you have like No, it's digital. Papers? I sketch on my iPad mostly. Oh, okay. So I um, actually on the um, on my mosaic page, on the page I made especially for this, which I might right. or might not leave up okay. <laughs> after this, I put a couple of, like this is what my sketches mm -hmm. look like. They are ugly, um, but well. <laughs> they sort of like give me an idea of mm -hmm. the positioning, they give me an idea of um, mm -hmm. what sort of pattern I want in the background. Mm -hmm. But um, as far as references are concerned, like the Santo Domingo piece I did, which you can sort of see the sketch. I'm pointing at the screen, but nobody can see me pointing. Yeah. <laughs> the Santo Just Domingo. Just the mouse the, around. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they can see the mouse. Okay. So uh, this one here, uh, which eventually became um, became this, was inspired by an uh, Art Deco cabinet, sort of a wood inlaid cabinet. So I mean, reference can sort of come from from anywhere. Um, I do love looking at. Um, furniture design and uh, wallpaper design and all of these like decorative arts type of I love the full palm shadows. Nice, yeah, yeah that's a little, <laughs> that's a little nice detail. Yeah. And I put that up there because Instagram crops to a square, ah, so okay. I wanted that to like be hidden when ah, it was cropped okay, okay. down, but like a little surprise if like you actually saw it. you actually it. open it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. Um, Wait, yeah, it? people are asking about uh, like how how you did that, and then uh, oh, somebody oh somebody's writing. Oh, that's him. Can okay. we expect faux stained glass work? That is such an awesome mm -hmm. question. Um, there was one uh, maybe. example. Maybe there was. Yeah, yeah the mm -hmm. the cover I worked on uh, for Luis uh, for uh, Grafica de los Rambles, mm -hmm. La Barcelona book yeah, yeah. Uh, was sort of my first foray into stained glass. This is awesome. Thank you. I, I can't wait it. to see others. Like uh, they're coming. I have yeah, one yeah. for Saratoga Springs coming. Uh -huh. That's the town I went to college mm -hmm. in. And then um, I am collaborating with a really awesome letter uh, that does ambigrams mm -hmm. to do one for Austin. Mm -hmm. So that one's coming. And I am also collaborating with this really wonderful uh, Japanese pattern designer called Tetsushi Eto for a mosaic on Yokohama. Okay. Oh, so, wow. um, yeah, I'm really excited about <laughs> sort of this next, uh, this it's next a, season. It's just a pity so for speak. this the box. <laughs> like, well, I sort of I know that, I know they can't. Yeah, you know, I put that pattern it. behind yeah. it sort of to hide it a little yeah. bit, to like bury the logo in there a tiny bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can't really do anything about no, that. No. Um, unfortunately. Awesome. So great. For, uh, thank you for sharing, you know, the work and some of your process. I hope you leave it there because it's kind of interesting to see. Even, I will, you know, yeah, I will. Horrible, um, like you, you say horrible sketches, mostly, but I, yeah. think, I think they're pretty cool sketches thank because you. sketches are all about, you know, positioning and they're like utilitarian, putting stuff. Yeah. yeah, they don't have to be, I mean, I've seen, you know, designers and artists like have very precise sketches. It's almost scary. Mm -hmm. Like I would never be able to right. draw like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I always think about sketches more for like just to pinpoint the position of things on on a, on a page or you know a, a format and then and then go from there so let's start looking at the two portfolios that were submitted to us in the past uh, couple of weeks uh, remember that there is a button down below uh, to ask uh, for us to review your portfolios in future streams um, Submitting it now doesn't mean that it's going to be looked at now. <laughs> so uh, just put yourself on the list, and in time we will uh, we will start we will go through to the portfolios that have been uh, submitted. So let's see the portfolio of Artur Teczynski. Right. I hope that say I say that right, Teczynski. But I think Artur, are you are are you yes? <laughs> Are you in the chat? If you are, just you know, yeah, give us say a hi, sign. give us a sign, and um, if you have any questions for Nicholas, uh, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah. So you we you've seen you've seen I the, have, yeah uh, you yeah have, you've had you, a sent, look. you sent me two really great portfolios, okay. so and it's a pleasure to, uh, to critique them. Um, they'll probably do, mm -hmm. be doing more praising than critiquing, but um, so how should I just click? Yeah, click on you know, like what I always say is like click on the ones that you know that um, that pique your interest. And yeah. Just pretend you're looking at somebody that right. you might want to uh, to hire or something, sure. or like to. Yeah, I, I've I've looked at all of these, and I I think this one is my favorite. Um, so um, our, our Arthur mm -hmm. has like this really great eye for color. 
and for patterns. So um, it, it was really sort of wonderful to like go through. Oh, here's here. Arthur is here. Perfect. Yes. Yay. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hello, Arthur. Um, Arthur. Arthur. Yeah, I'm, Arthur. I'm sorry. No, I, no, I, I apologize in advance. And basically, Tensky is his uh, is his brand. Oh, because awesome. that's his name, Tens Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome. So basically, that's the brand he created for himself, so that, which is actually the hardest thing to do. Oh I, my god! I yeah. always, I always outsource branding for myself. <laughs> really? Yes, because I guess it's like I doing was, your wedding invitation or exactly, anything like yeah. that. It's well, like I did my wedding beautiful. invitations, but that's pretty great. <laughs> but uh, but like for to to create the image for oneself is super hard because you you don't know where to start. Right. Mm. I, yeah, I did my logo um, a couple years ago, and it was it was a difficult experience. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm in need of a new one, but mm -hmm. uh, I need a freshen up, freshening up. But I have never, mm -hmm. I don't have the energy to like get back into that right now. But I really love, I just, I love the sort of variety, like in these patterns and these business cards. I just generally really love patterns. So anytime I see mm -hmm. them, oh, that's nice. Yeah, to hear it's the beautiful. Little detailing um, of the envelope. Yeah, the typesetting is really solid. Mm -hmm. um, and both, actually both the portfolios you sent me, and I think a lot of people who are really mm -hmm. like good at Behance um, are, have amazing ways to show their mm -hmm. work on, the, on mm -hmm. the page. Like I'm not, I use Behance, but I'm not terribly good at it. So I just kind of it's like- It's an art to, yeah, uh, to present is. yourself well on Behance because uh, it, that's, it's an opportunity to tell your story. Thank you for, well, just like it. You are with my account. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm curious because I see Photoshop, Illustrator, but I also see Cinema, Cinema 4D. 4D. Yeah, I, I wonder for what. That. Maybe for the mockups. The mockups. Um, um, mm -hmm. Maybe he'll tell us. Uh, yeah, tell us, Artur. What uh, what did you use um, uh, Cinema 4D for? I sort of oh, see maybe this, this. Like, yeah, probably yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. this like postmodern, like mm -hmm. almost like Memphis mm -hmm. Milano influence, yeah, yeah, which uh -huh. is like really awesome and really really on trend right now. Or, or coming back anyway. I see more and more designers like actually using Cinema 4D to create these almost um, uh, non 3D looking mm -hmm. graphics. But yeah, but sort of flat flat illustrations. Flat illustrations. Yeah, yeah. Like to have the base and then uh, they take it to Illustrator. Do you or, have any experience with Cinema 4D? Uh, I wish I had. Yeah, I've uh, never this even is the opened type of it. Things, but you know. It's with all these programs, you know, you create a little ball or something, right. and you make it bounce. And you say, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. And then right. you move to the next step, and you say, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. no time. <laughs> Let's move on. But so this was probably mm -hmm. my favorite one of his. Um, I also really love this series of. Um, of uh, letters he designed. Oh, that's the 36 of like, days of typos. Yeah, so that was yes. like. That was a while. Mm -hmm. That was a couple months ago, yeah, maybe. Uh -huh. And I mean, I. Did you participate? I I did like one or two. Okay. Um, but uh, props to people who were able to get. Oh, through. Arthur said Cinema 4D for the patterns. Oh no way. Okay, some some That's of the awesome. yeah, like the I, I see what you mean. Yeah, the it's like there was this really crazy like spiral pattern I think. Oh yeah oh, yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Awesome. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So props to anybody who was able to get through all 36 mm -hmm. days. That was amazing. But if. The organizers of 36 Days of Type are mm -hmm. listening. Um, they should add an ampersand. Like, oh. why wasn't it on there? Because that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, these are really cool. I like how they look like sort of like diagrams. Um, again, like really awesome use of pattern and color, mm -hmm. um, which is something color anyway that I struggle with. So I definitely appreciate seeing it in other people's work. And that's always a good idea if you scroll down a little bit, like to put it on an object, mm -hmm. um, because this also like inspires people. Oh, there could be more. Right. Um, great. Yeah, it makes it into an item that you sort of like want. Yeah. Or yeah, like yeah. even if I mean it's, it, it might be real, but even if it's not, it like makes you sort of want it. And I love how the background. I know I keep commenting on like just Behance portfolio sort of mm -hmm. setup. Let's go up but a little like, like to I the top of it. I love how this background becomes like. Yeah. The, the backdrop for the mm -hmm. book that he put at the end. Mm -hmm. So I think that's like super successful. Um, oh, this one was a really cool font that he did, or I think the font maybe is, is forthcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, again, like a lot of respect for anybody who does type design. Mm -hmm. uh, like I mentioned, we just released a font at the studio uh, last month, mm -hmm. and we have another one in the works. Mm -hmm. And um, type design is definitely an art. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you know that application in Illustrator or Photoshop that's called Font Self? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I have uh, used it a couple times yeah, yeah. Uh, when I needed something really, mm -hmm. really quick. Mm -hmm. It's 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 like an awesome sort of uh, gateway into. Uh -huh. into They've added design. kerning last week. So. Oh no way! Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, uh, so it's it's bulking so it could up. Be yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we used uh, glyphs primarily for mm -hmm. yeah. for our type design, mm -hmm. and um, we uh, but we we uh, got it. Um, yeah. Anyway, it's mm -hmm. yeah. so. Yeah, props to, to font designers in general. We were, we were speaking to a font designer uh, a couple days ago who was sort of like looking at our font and mm -hmm. the attention to detail font designers have and like the eye, mm -hmm. that he was able to pick up on the smallest inconsistencies, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really amazing. Um, but yeah, this was awesome. Also, obviously 80s, 80s postmodern influence, <laughs> which is a lot of fun, but Again, like really great use of color, mm. um, really beautiful. I don't know. I've, I've been trying to figure out how like people. Someone told me that you can use like a bright color and then sort of like a complementary mm -hmm. dark color, and that's like a good way to get like two or three colors in there. But um, yeah, I was never good at color because I'm I'm a little bit colorblind. Really? So that you know, that's uh, like a like a design school. Everybody like not the design school because design school really helped me with color, uh, but. From all my high school and like all the way up to like people, teachers would tell me you'll never be a graphic designer because oh you know, my you're God. colorblind. You know, no, yeah, I will, I will. And then I, I became. <laughs> a really good friend of mine in Italy is also colorblind, mm -hmm. and he's an illustrator, yeah, so yeah. Uh, it's definitely possible. Um, I mean, color is all subjective. I love right? that that skull. Um, like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, really cool. And again, like his uh, the way he shows projects is mm -hmm. very successful, I think, just putting them on objects. Mm -hmm. It all looks very, very polished. But that, I guess that's why you chose them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> to like... <laughs> and he always thanks people for watching, which I appreciate. Yeah. Um, I just liked it again yeah. from you, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's okay. Um, ah, wreck me. I'm a colorblind designer too. Yeah. So, you know, this one, this one day, this was this, there was this, this girl that, that contacted me on Twitter, like she was like, Freaking out because she said her teacher told her that she would never be a graphic designer. Because I said uh, because of that, because of being colorblind. And I said no, no, don't worry. And, and then I made a Twitter poll, and I had hundreds of uh, of answers to the poll. And it turned out that almost a third of the designers that were really? following me, like, had you know, were colorblind. Mm -hmm. And so I gave her the uh, you know the strength to yeah. Uh, and she became a very successful. Well, speaking of uh, really mm -hmm. successful colorblind um, graphic designers, mm -hmm. uh, Luis loves to tell the story. Uh, her boss, Herb mm -hmm. Ballin, um, who's like one of the greats of uh, of <laughs> New York, but also in general typography and mm -hmm. lettering. He was colorblind, uh -huh. and uh, she was she. She just told me the story where like uh, there'd be a project and he'd take the Pantone book and mm -hmm. be like, let's look for a good red. Yeah. And he was like on the greens page or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But someone said color is overrated mm -hmm. and I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Herb Lubelin was colorblind. Yeah. Louise says, oh, yeah. yeah. Louise is paying attention. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it in Rome? It's, yeah, it's, it's uh, three something or three no, 40. 20 to four. Yeah. So are we on schedule? Do we need to move yeah, on yeah. to Danilo? Let's, let's uh, look Danilo at one last or, project. Okay, great. Um, and then we'll move to Danilo. Yeah. So let's, I guess we could take a look at his, um, this is like a series of, um, I think, no, this, this wasn't it. Um, there was something else. Oh, logo pack, maybe. Um, yeah, he's also very versatile, oh, mm -hmm. which is great. Like, he seems to be able to do illustration very well. Um, there might be, I'm not sure if this is lettering or if this is a font. Um, I would maybe recommend kerning the T and the A mm -hmm. in a yeah, little that, bit. Yeah, that, like, that completely... Mm -hmm. And maybe like ra raising up the crossbar on the T so that the A can sort of nestle mm -hmm. in underneath. But um, otherwise, he seems like he has illustration down mm -hmm. really well. Um, and also like very prolific. There's just a lot mm -hmm. of work on his page. Yeah. Um, Great stuff, Arthur. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I hope this the was feedback awesome. was was useful. Really inspiring. Thank and you. we're gonna move to our second portfolio, Danilo De Marco Un from uh, from Milano. But I also see that he's part of the Swiss creatives here, Bern, Switzerland. So he might be uh, Swiss. Yeah. We thought we figured. He definitely <laughs> speaks Italian. Yes. Uh, and so I, Danilo, I loved... if you're in the chat, please. 
knock and, and say hi. <laughs> I guess we could do this whole thing in Italian. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, his work is like really, really awesome. I went through it um, and there's really nothing I didn't like. Um, so I guess we could just start anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, this one stood out to me when I was uh, just also in general, mm -hmm. like awesome presentation on, on Behance. I need to like really it's take notes. It's always a good idea to mm -hmm. have like an animation yeah, to introduce the page. So honestly, mm -hmm. generally I mm -hmm. hate when when there's all these like lines around mm -hmm. logos so people yeah, show yeah, the yeah. geometry mm -hmm. behind them. I, I think it like, but this is a really excellent way of showing it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't like belabor that point, mm -hmm. but it sort of gives an insight into the process mm -hmm. and then it disappears, which yeah. I really like. So that was a really tasteful way of doing that. Um, and that's also a, a very good thing, like to, to, to show the process on your on your portfolio, mm -hmm. like an introduction, and then you know what typography, like really show oh, and the color scheme. I'm looking at this for the first time, but I'm loving it because it gives me it gives me insight in how how you think, um, uh, and that's that's very important. Yeah. Um, so this is a, uh, I believe, a logo for a photographer, and mm -hmm. I got, I mean, I got photography immediately, which uh, before before even clicking mm -hmm. on it. So that I think speaks to kind of the strength of, of the logo and how communicative it is. With, um, I oh, really Danilo's here. Ciao, hey, Danilo. Danilo. Ciao. Benvenuto. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, his. He also has a really good uh, eye for matching up um, logos with supporting typefaces. Mm -hmm. So I, I like how he chose, uh, I, might, I might have gone even more geometric with the supporting typeface, but I like how he chose a, a, a font that has this pretty circular O's mm -hmm. that kind of like echo that logo. Um, so that was really awesome. And again, everything is beautifully photographed and beautifully presented, which is really inspiring. Um, so, Another project that stood out to me, well his poster design in general is like really cool and he does these really awesome animations every time he shows a poster, which I think are, are like for the, hmm. yeah, so I think it's for the, just for the Behance site. Mm -hmm. I don't think this, I don't think the poster is, is meant to be animated, but it's such an awesome like little like gift mm -hmm. that you can give to like people that visit your site. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's beyond just like this is a poster I've done. Mm -hmm. It's like this little extra thing, which is really nice. So obviously, it has a great sense of composition, and, um, and this definitely has a very like Italian look to it. So it's really awesome. Um, he designed a typeface also, which is is really is really like nicely professionally designed sans serif. But mm -hmm. what I found really good about that typeface is this series of icons he did for it. Um, and you know, now we're like in the age of emojis, so mm -hmm. I feel like having nobody, or at least I haven't seen very many people who do these who create a typeface with sort of like almost an emoji set in mm -hmm, mind. Mm -hmm. That's like works with the typeface. So I think that was a really excellent idea. Um, oops, oops, wait, oh, got it. I just recently learned how to zoom back out. Um, but yeah, these are... I would have done like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these, uh, these are really awesome and um, I, I really love them. My, I, I think I would have, if I'm being nitpicky, I would have one comment and that would be that the, um, the edges of these icons are rounded and the font is is squared off. So like, I think the thing that would have really brought it over the top for me and made it like absolutely perfect would be if if there was a little bit more communication between the font and the icons. But um, otherwise, I mean, I think this looks really awesome. Um, and I think he did a really, really excellent job. And I think more people should be doing. Oh, and that was featured in, let's see, let's cover all that. That's interaction design. So how does this work? Like, how it's do you our, get these little banners? You get them when Behance like features your projects on specific okay. pages. Got it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, here he goes. He's, he's been featured in graphic design and interactive. Oh, and school probably. Yeah. yeah. Um, student show. Student show. Okay. Yeah. So um, Danilo, where did you study? Did you study in uh, in Milano or in Switzerland? Oh, this is so Swiss. Yes. This one. This is what I was talking about. Yeah, about, we were talking earlier uh, about, about this. the Swiss, Swiss graphic design. This is it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is iconic. 
Mm. Um, but also he does like make it a little bit unexpected, mm -hmm. which, which I, uh, I appreciate. I think Swiss, Swiss graphic design. And he animates that. Yeah, too. he animates wow. them, which is awesome. <laughs> Also, I have a lot of respect mm -hmm. for anybody who can do motion stuff because um, I am not yet capable of doing that. I like the yet. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, well, <laughs> you know, never give up. <laughs> uh, I, oh, I really liked this one. Um, so he, he sort of like fades, he makes this poster where he sort of like fades out this, uh, um, this, this word, Grafica mm -hmm. Multimodiale. And, um, I loved how he can commute. Like right now, it's 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 gradated also in color. Mm -hmm. um, I almost wonder what it would look like if it was all white and like the gradation came only from the deconstruction mm -hmm. of the typography. Um, but I think it's really striking, and mm -hmm. it has like sort of a matrix look to it, which is also really nice. Mm -hmm. And um, so one one thing that um, I um, I really would have loved to see is if the the type kind of deconstructed differently going the other way. Mm -hmm. So right now it's like deconstructing in one way and then like reversing itself. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but I think the idea of like, it almost looks like something that's like building itself and then it's it there could, for a like, second. Like, like this, like the, it, like the O for example, okay, I'm gonna use the mouse, like it, the, the hole opens and mm -hmm. it, it like deconstructs like that. It could have been interesting that it's- it Deconstructs the other de way. Deconstructs yeah. the other way on the- yeah. But it's still like a really strong mm -hmm. yeah. concept, and it's and, really beautiful. And Danilo done. said, "I'm from Catania, so oh, uh, so nothing to do with Switzerland." Sicily. Have you ever been to Sicily? I went to Sicily on a uh, high school field trip. Okay. It was a three-day. Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. really beautiful. Um, have you been? Never. Ne I have no. to. The, the, the furthest south I've been in Italy is Napoli. Well, also like really nice. Coast, yeah. But um, yes. Sicily is, yeah. is really mm -hmm. wonderful. Oh, and here we have the. Yeah, the animation, of course. Yeah, oh, that oh. looks really excellent. Danilo, watch out, there's a typo here. Poster it. Mm. Yeah, typos. <laughs> um, let's see, what else can we look at? Um, we just have a few more minutes. Yeah, oh, this one was really awesome. Uh, I, um, I was, it took me a beat to understand what was happening, but it's uh, it's based on this, uh, from what he says, and I really appreciate the explanations that he puts mm -hmm. before, like into his so thought important. process. I cannot repeat how yes. important these explanations yeah. are, because um, otherwise we guess. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's based on a Roman or a Latin palindrome, I think, and uh, so at first I, I was reading it in lines, and then I was I was thinking, well, I, he should have spaced the lines out more mm -hmm. because now it's all blending together. But then I realized it was that was the intention mm -hmm. because it reads it reads both horizontally and vertically, which I thought was was really cool. And I really like how he gave it. I mean, he stayed true to sort of the Latin mm -hmm. Roman influences by using Trajan, uh, and and but still made it look fresh mm -hmm. and modern. Um, um, yeah, so I thought that was really beautiful. Not animated though, so yeah, yeah. yeah. he's uh, he spoiled us, so now we expect it on yeah. every project. <laughs> well, so I really loved. Thank really you so much, that. Danilo, yeah. for sharing your portfolio as well. So Arthur and Danilo, uh, I hope the feedback was uh, was useful for you. And yeah, keep on posting your your um, portfolios. We will be looking at all of them and uh, scheduling them in future uh, streams as well. And uh, Nicholas, what can yeah. I say? That it's was been so. Really wonderful. I loved it. I love your work. Thank uh, you. I'm gonna so make. Nice I'm gonna you. follow your Instagram, like to see where Thank that you. Where it goes. Yeah, is, is I'm, going. I'm excited to see yeah, where it yeah. goes uh -huh. too. Okay. I'm really excited. Uh, and we'll be right back at the top of the hour with Rosa Kammermeier and uh, Christine Heron, um, hand letterers uh, who are going. Uh, who, who, yes, uh, Rosa is a new creative resident here at Adobe, oh, and awesome. uh, Christine Heron uh, was a creative resident last year. So we're going to have a new and an old creative resident here with us on stream live from the 99U conference in New York City on adobelive.com. Thank you so much for swinging by. Great. Thank you and so much. Stay tuned. We'll be right back at the top of the hour. Bye.